This is the Peugeot 2008, E2008 to be precise, because this is an EV. And this avocado I'm holding here is like Chekhov's gun on stage. It will go off. You just wait. Peugeot 2008 is one of Europe's most popular B crossovers. In 2019, it was behind the Renault Captur, the Dacia Duster and the VW T-Roc. But that was the end of the first-gen model production. The 2020 data will probably be skewed by the coronavirus pandemic, but Peugeot's small crossover has a lot going for it. First of all, there are three powertrains to choose from. A petrol, a diesel and an EV like this one. If a salesman is smarter than your average macaque, they will not let a prospective buyer out of the showroom. Stun them with a hard avocado, if necessary. If the avocado was ripe, then an average macaque would probably eat it. I got the EV for testing, it's a trendy topic these days and the PSA designs their cars in a way to minimize the differences resulting from different powertrains. You can tell the electrified model apart from the regular internal combustion engine versions by several E badges as well as elements of the grille being the same color as the rest of the car. Also the E2008 gets dedicated Alcantara upholstery on the seats. It also says in the PR blurb that the Lion should shine in different colors in the sun but there is no sun, so yeah, it's silver and bluish and wet, like me. Second generation Peugeot 2008 grew. At 430 centimeters, it is 14 centimeters longer than the first gen model. The wheelbase is now 6 centimeters longer. The car is also slightly wider and slightly lower. An interesting detail, these are not alloy wheels, but plastic hubcaps. Peugeot claims it's safe 4 kilograms and it is also easier to change wheel design. Like the new 208, also the 2008 now gets their running lights resembling lion's fangs. The headlights as well as tail lamps get 3 stripe design. There are a lot of lines and creases on the body. If you want a car that stands out from the crowd, the 2008 fits the bill without sacrificing much from everyday usability. The boot looks normal, regular cars have 434 liters VDA, the electric model about 400, the battery takes up some of the space under the floor, hence only half of the spare tire well where you can fit a charging cable if you really try. There is a double floor which can be dropped or locked in the open position to make loading stuff easier. The parcel shelf fits underneath nicely, but there are no shopping bag hooks. Predictably, this is a French car. Who does shopping in a car? Huh? You take your baguette, uh, you go home, you have breakfast, or preferably eat and drink in a cafe like normal people do. Why do I need a car? Voiture, c'est pour... Yeah, why do they need an electric car anyway, since they don't use it? When getting in, watch out for the high sills. It's not a big deal in the back, but the driver may hit their legs on the steering wheel. There is a decent amount of legroom in the back. The headroom, not so much, especially when sitting close to the doors. There are OK door pockets, two USB ports, no AC vents and no armrest or ski hatch. In the front, the driver is greeted by the 3D digital display. You can turn off the 3D effect, but I like it. There are several preset display modes as well as two personal modes, which leads me to a couple of things I find particularly irritating about this car. In my personal display mode, I like to see energy use data. So there is trip 1, trip 2 and current consumption. I have it set to trip 1. But every time I start the car, it shows the current consumption. So I click on a button that should take me back to trip 1. But it takes me to trip 2, so I have to click twice to get back to trip 1. Or the rear window wiper. In Peugeot's, you twist the right stock forward to turn the wiper on. 
and twist it back to its original position to turn it off. Nothing out of the ordinary here, but turn the car off while the wiper is in the on position, and when you turn the car back on, the wiper will be off. So you have to twist it back and then twist it forward again to make it work. The automatic wipers in the front can go into full attack mode when there is a slight drizzle and the car is standing at the lights, but in heavier rain, on the move, they sometimes don't work at all and need to be reset. And then there is something I suspect was a cost-saving measure. Keyless access works only on the driver's door, unless you use totally hands-free unlock on approach and lock on departure, which I don't like. Also, if you don't open the door after the car unlocks, it will lock back. So far, it's all normal. But then the proximity sensor stops working and you have to use the remote control to unlock the car again. Okay, I got it out of my system. Let's continue. Like in the hybrid Opel Grandland X, also here the charging time and the departure time settings are in two different places. Perhaps the designers assumed off-peak rates don't change as often as departure hours when you want the car preconditioned. The door pockets are a decent size, the glove box is very deep and it's hard to reach to the end, storage under the armrest is small. Cup holders are in the worst place possible because you'll be hitting the drinks with your elbow. There is a small smartphone shelf, a USB-A and a USB-C port. Android Auto works only on the USB-A port, which is on the passenger side. I like how the yellow stitching corresponds with the yellow ambient light. You can change the ambient light color, of course, but then it won't look as nice. And check out how much space the front passenger gets thanks to the recessed glove box. You can slide the seat forward and mount a rear-facing child seat in the back. Also, there are Isofix mounting points on the front seat, however, I suggest you take your child seats with you for a test drive before you buy any car. The Peugeot E2008 drives and feels like any other car. The decision to choose this powertrain or another is dictated solely by the customer's needs. If you drive long distances, you get a diesel. If you do a bit of town, a bit of medium distances, you get a petrol. And if you're mainly in the town, you get an EV. But even if you get the EV, you don't have to worry about charging time. The E2008 charges up to 100 kilowatts. The batteries are liquid cooled, hence it can charge so quickly. You can also charge from a type two socket, 7.4 kilowatts as standard and 11 kilowatts as an option. So charging to full will take between four and a half and seven hours. From a regular 230 ohm socket, it's going to take a whole day, but overnight you should regain about 100 kilometers range. range. Peugeot promises up to 310 km WLTP, this would mean 16 kWh per 100 km and it's within reach without going into eco mode, however this means using recuperation and driving mainly around the city. Recuperation, like in the VW ID3, works kinda sorta. You have to remember to turn it on every time and it's not powerful enough for one pedal driving. Also, it doesn't work when the battery level charge is high. You need to lose about 15-20% before you start feeling region braking kick in. Peugeot has yet to announce the official 0 to 100 km time for the E2008, so I measured it myself, as well as the 80 to 120 km per hour. I got 10 and 8 seconds respectively, regardless of whether I was in sport or normal mode. At 136 horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque, and weighing over 1500 kilograms, it's not a speed demon. But then most ICE 2008s offer similar performance. Visibility is average, and so is the soundproofing. Insufficient for an EV, in my opinion, where you hear a lot from the outside. The suspension evens out less complicated bumps, but when the going gets rough, it gets very upset. The suspension, I mean. 
As standard, the E2008 gets a lot of driver aids, but using something as simple as adaptive cruise control requires meeting some criteria which the car kept telling me have not been met. Price of the Peugeot 2008 with an internal combustion engine started €21,000 for a 100 horsepower petrol version. The cheapest diesel will set you back 24 grand. This E2008 in GT trim costs €41,000 plus options which bring the total price up to about €42,500. I like the way the new Peugeot 2008 looks and I like that you can choose the powertrain that best suits my needs. I'm less fond of the electric range which limits me to the city where I could just as well get a cheaper EV with even shorter range. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.